It's very good to see all of you here today. Um, I'm a leadership and career coach, and when I spoke to Cheryl, I'm very, thank you for inviting me. I uh, wanted me to speak about careers. So I thought, yeah, I can probably say a few things about that. Um, and the title of my talk is very simple, Success is Freedom. That's, you know, from all the research I've done, that's the conclusion that I've come to. And I want to just start by asking, who is successful? And last year, I was in a CEO meeting uh, in Lagos, Nigeria. My mentor took me there. And, and at that meeting, it was, it was fantastic. All the CEOs, there were CEOs of about a, a hundred of the biggest companies in Nigeria. But something interesting struck me. That the most visibly successful CEO were not necessarily the most successful. Uh, be it financially or the size of the companies that they led. And I know this for sure because a few days earlier, I was with, I had the privilege of uh, meeting and spending some time with Aliko Dangote, who Forbes calls the richest man in Africa. And at that meeting, he was his usual self, simple, modest, and humble. If you were there and you didn't know better, you would not choose him as the most successful CEO. You would, necessarily, you would definitely not choose him as the richest man in Africa. And so it got me thinking, who is successful? Because if success was about money, uh, prestige, power, and status, then the tragedies that we hear about, we won't be hearing about them. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, within a two-week period, two CEOs in Europe committed suicide at a young age. So if success is not about money, and power, prestige, and status, what is success about? That's the question I have for you today. And when I think of my life, uh, other people that I've had the privilege of meeting, like Dan Gutte, or Dana Jump, uh, a kindergarten school teacher, who is called a millionaire teacher, and many other truly successful people, I've come to realize that they have one commonality, and that is that they are free. And I don't mean that they're free from life's challenges. No, 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 no. Nobody is exempt from life's challenges. We will each have our own <coughs> obstacles and challenges to overcome. But they're free in that they're, they have a freedom to enjoy their work, a freedom to enjoy their family, and attain whatever financial goals they have, attain financial independence doing what they love. And this realization really came to me uh, a few months ago when I started my own business. Like you, I always wanted to be successful. So at the tender age of 14, uh, my sister's friend came to come and see her. And he was success personified. His watch, his suit, his shoes, his car, his skin. <laughs> he was successful. And so I only had two questions. What do you do? He said, I'm a banker. What do I need to become a banker? He said, be good with people and, and, and be good with numbers. And that was it. I was going to become a banker. And many of you might be asking, were you passionate about banking? Passion? Nobody was asking that question then. In fact, growing up in Nigeria then, your parents chose your career for you. You are going to become a lawyer. <laughs> you are going to become an accountant. You are going to become a doctor. It doesn't matter that that person is afraid of blood. Doctor. You are going to become an engineer. It doesn't matter that that person has failed in science subjects. Engineer, work hard. And so I went off into banking. A few years after, a few years when I finished university. And within a few years, I was miserable. I was fed up. I was frustrated. I was working hard like everybody else, but I simply wasn't getting their results. Not because I'm not an exceptional individual, far from it. Uh, because that I just wasn't in my passion zone. I just wasn't in my strength zone. My heart wasn't in it. I was tired of it. I contrast that time to where I am now. Just yesterday, I was at Imperial College Business School, uh, helping a group of executives, doing some group coaching, helping them figure out problems to some uh, solutions to some problems that they had. Uh, today, I'm speaking to this audience. Uh, early next month, at the beginning of August, I'm going to be in Barclays helping them with the schools program. 
Later on that launch, I'm going to INSEE, a business school in France, to help them help their MBAs work and figure out how to achieve the career success that they want. Uh, early in September, I'm going to uh, Ghana to help uh, a top tier bank develop their leaders. I kept July relatively free because I'm trying to finish off a book. Guys, I'm having a ball. I'm loving my life and I'm loving my career. The question is why aren't more people enjoying this success? Why aren't more people free? Why aren't more people enjoying their work and, and going about achieving their financial goals, doing what they love? Because if it was easy, everybody would want it. Everybody would go for it. So I come to realize that freedom is not easy. You don't ask for freedom. You demand freedom. You don't hope for freedom. You fight for freedom. You put everything in you that you have and bring about that reality. If there was going to be uh, uh, just a, a stone straw and you get to success and freedom, everybody will be doing it. Mm -hmm. Mercer, the global consulting firm, uh, create, did a survey of thousands of people across the globe. And they found that 56% of people, regardless of race, creed, gender, and nationality, are unhappy with their work, unhappy with their career. So why are, are they not doing anything about it? Why are they not fighting for the freedom? Because it's not easy. I was just thinking about my life, and uh, a friend recently told me, Uche, you are lucky. You're doing what you love. You control your own time. You choose when you want to work, when you don't want to work. You're, you're, you're lucky. And I thought to myself, hmm, luck. I'm not sure. When I left investment banking, I started my first business and it failed and I became broke. Is that luck? <laughs> when I could no longer pay my bills, and I had to rent out my flat because I couldn't pay my mortgage anymore. And I moved in with a friend. Is that luck? When I no longer needed an alarm clock because I was sharing my friend's daughter who was two years old, her room with her, sleeping on the floor. And at 5 a.m. thereabouts, she will cry and wake up. And I dare not complain because it is her room. <laughs> is that luck? When I decided I had to go back into the job market to figure out what I wanted to do in business and how I'll make it a success. And I took a 45% pay cut because I decided I was not going to settle. I was not going to go back into investment banking. Is that luck? I don't think so. Someone once said that the more I work hard, the more I practice, the more I prepare, the luckier I become. Hmm. So, how do you engage in this fight? I was thinking about it. That day when I was sitting on the floor in my friend's house, asking myself, is this the end? Am I ever gonna rise again? Am I ever gonna be able to hold my head up high and walk into a room bold and confident like my other friends? What got me to stand up? What got me to go from challenge after challenge, obstacle after obstacle? What got me to continue? It wasn't a plan. Martin Luther King didn't say I have a plan. He said I have a dream. It was a picture. A picture that one day I will be, the, I will be able to change the course of a nation because I was the coach to the president. And because I coached him effectively and he became a better leader and led his country effectively, the country became better, a picture. A picture that one day I'll be invited to speak to a, a conference and an audience like this and speak in business schools and conferences all over the world as I've done times in the past, a picture. A picture that one day I'll be able to write books that impact people and change their lives forever, a picture. A picture that one day I would have the, the best gift of all, Control over my own time. Control over my own destiny. A picture that I'll be able to take my children to school if I wanted to. 
take them in the morning and pick them up in the afternoon because there was no boss telling me what to do or what not to do. A picture. And as Sheryl Sandberg said, who is the COO of Facebook, it's good to have a picture, a big picture, and think far. But you need to have the short-term pictures. So when I went back into the job market, I had a short-term picture. In two years, I need to be out of this, and I need to be starting my business again. So I'm going to work here. And I took a 45% pay cut because the job was going to give me skills that would help me be successful in the business I wanted to do. You take a job for what is going to make you, not how much money you're going to get. Yes. I did an executive MSc in coaching and behavioral change in that time. And two years later, I was able to go on and start my business and succeed at it. Right now, I'm doing research on how middle managers can transition into senior management so that I can become a more effective coach, a more effective speaker, a more effective trainer and facilitator. Next year, I'm starting a PhD program. What are you doing right now in relation to the dream that you have? And a picture is not enough. You need to make sure it's aligned to your passion. And passion is, for me, is very simple. I like to describe it as a tree. In one line, my passion is helping people maximize their potential. And that's the tree. But as you know, every tree has branches. So what is your branch going to be? Is it going to be, a, for me, a, a kindergarten school teacher like Dina Jump? Or is it going to be a leadership and career coach, a trainer, a facilitator? It takes time to figure these things out, but you have to invest the time. And knowing your passion is not enough. You need the right people in your life. The people like mentors, family, friends, clients, who bring out the best in you, who encourage you, who spur you on, who help you to become your best self. And you can have the best picture, know your passion, have all the right people in your life, but if you don't perform, you're never going to get to where you want to get. So you need to perform. And don't I see it every time with my clients when they come to me frustrated? I'm tired of this job. I'm frustrated. I want out. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of this boss, a leader. I'm, I feel stuck. I'm tired of this team. I want a new challenge. And I say, hold up. One question. How are you performing right now? And they say to me, what do you mean by performance? I'm just about getting the job done. And I say, that's the problem. You feel to realize that where you currently are in life, wherever you currently are, is the door, the gateway to where you want to go to. When I was meeting, I had dinner with Sir John Bond when I was at HSBC, he used to be the CEO and the chairman. And I asked him the question, what is, what is your secret? How, how have you become so successful? And he said to me, you won't marry where I am now as a CEO and chairman to where I'm coming from. When I started as a clerk in the bank, with no university degree. The only secret I can tell you, young man, is perform where you are. Make the most of every opportunity. Realize that, though you might not be able to see how, this where you are is the window to where you're trying to get to. Imperial College Business School became my biggest client when I left them. And now they're my second biggest client. You need to perform. And let's not forget the need to persevere. Because there are going to be challenges. But how much easier is it to persevere when you're performing, doing what you love? Having the right people around you. And bringing to reality that compelling future. That future that is so attractive. You must live in it. You must make it a reality. <coughs> and let's not forget the need to perspire. A great quote says, success is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. I was lied to, guys. I thought that when I started to run my own business, I would not have to work as hard. That's a lie. I do agree that choose a job you love and you will never have to work another day in your life. You will never have to work in the sense that you won't have to labor in a job that you hate. But you have to work twice as hard. But when it's what you love to do, 
the other day I was having, I was with a coaching client. And he was telling me how, you know, usefully found the session. It was a breakthrough for him. He loved it. And I sat down there reclining in my chair thinking, I can't believe I'm paid to do this. Speak to you about your passions, help you break through in your thinking. And I would do this for free. I've done it for free many times in the past. You need to work hard. And some of you might be saying to me, Uchi, I know some of these things. I know that I need to have my passion. I know that I need to perform. I know that I need to persevere. I know all these things, but I'm still not where I want to be. I've had that question a number of times, and I've thought about it. There might be one thing missing, and that is acceptance. You need to accept who you are. I need to accept that Uche Ezuchi is Nigerian. And that comes with certain good and bad. <laughs> I need to accept who I am. <clears throat> when I was in investment banking, I had to be brutally honest with myself. I realized that when I looked around me and all the people that were around me, I was never going to be the best in this industry. Not because I couldn't do it, just because it wasn't what I was called and made to do. So I have to accept the fact that if, you, if I remain here, I will be at best average, and that's not good enough for me. I have to accept the fact that this industry was maximizing the use of my weaknesses. And I had to tailor my career to maximize the use of my strengths and minimize the use of my weaknesses. I needed to accept who I am. Why do people who hate their job, they're tired of where they are in life, do nothing about it? Why do people who know that they need to change, but they do nothing to bring about that change because they haven't accepted who they are. You need to accept your development points. I know you think that you're all that in a bag of chips. You are all that in a bag of chips. You are all that and then some, but you do have development points. You want to be yourself more with skill. Be your best self. Accept your development points. Be open to constructive criticisms. You need to accept your predilections. If you're truly going to be successful, you need to understand and accept the fact that there's some habits you have that are going to steal success away from you if you're not disciplined and put them into check. Uche Ezechi loves to watch series. Game of Thrones, Scandal, Suits, House of Cards, Damages, all, I watch all of them. And you know what it's like? You watch one episode and you promise yourself it's just going to be one hour. And then when it finishes, you give a stretch. Knowing that in, on Netflix it's going to start again very soon. <laughs> and then it starts again and you, think, you feel guilty. Uh, look, at, look, look at Kevin Spacey in House of Cards. I, I owe it to him to watch one more hour. <laughs> and then five hours later, your day is gone and you're upset and guilty that you've not done what you're meant to do. Accept your predilections. You need to accept your predilection if you like to sleep. You snooze 30 minutes and an hour and three hours later, you're still sleeping. Accept your predilections and then make a decision to be disciplined and bring those predilections under control. You need to accept your path in life. You might have an identical plan, picture, vision as somebody else. But you look at them and it seems like they're having it easy. Everything just seems to work out for them. They seem to just get all the opportunities. Why you have to slog it out? Why you have to work hard? Learn from other people. Be challenged by other people, but don't compare. Because we each have our own unique path, which many times we are not in control over. Life happens. You need to accept your past and your background. Accept your past. Stuff has happened. Deal with it. You need to accept the price that you have to pay. We each have a price to pay. The Bible says that a wise person who wants to build a house takes a step back and counts the cost. Have you counted the cost for the picture and the dream that you want? Or are you just hoping that success is going to happen? 
Many times some people don't go through some challenges, not because those challenges weren't predictable, they were predictable if they had simply looked at other people that had gone ahead of them. But they didn't take time to think, how am I going to handle this? And some of you are thinking, well, Uche, I, I have 100% accepted who I am. I'm still not where I want to be. In that case, add one final thing to the mix. Patience. Because it's only a matter of time. Where I am now, I think of when I was sitting on the floor in my friend's house, wondering, I couldn't see how the future was going to become a reality. All I knew, at that time, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror and with integrity say, you're going to make it. The only thing I could say with confidence was, it is possible. How, I don't know. But it is possible, somehow, if I continue to push, if I continue to press in. Don't stop when you are three feet from gold. When one more kick, one more punch, one more push, just pressing in a little more, and you are going to get there. And I round up with a story of Dina Jump, a kindergarten school teacher. You can see her, enjoying her work, passionate about what she does, excellent at it, because teachers all over in her school are constantly telling her how good she is, how great as a teacher she is. Doing her best as a mother and a, and, and a wife, enjoying her family the best she knows how to, and then one day, the right opportunity comes. She's now able to sell her lesson outlines to teachers all over the world, driven by one passion only, to see children educated appropriately. Keeping her job and working hard at her job, but now starting to work hard at night as well. Two jobs now, working twice as hard, and in the space of two years, sells so many products online and becomes a millionaire. Who would have thought that a kindergarten school teacher who, ha who earns thousands in a year can become a millionaire doing what she loves? Friends, I'm here to tell you that success is not about power, money, status, and prestige. No. Success is freedom. It's freedom to enjoy your work. To have time and enjoy your family. Because without family, what's the point? It's freedom to attain whatever financial goals you want to attain. Become a billionaire, become a millionaire, have a few thousand pounds, whatever it is you want. But doing that, doing what you love. And as you continue from today, take one step, and then another step, and then another step. If you have to rest a little, rest a little, and then take another step. But don't stop until you get where you want to get to. Don't stop until you achieve true success. Don't stop until you achieve freedom. Don't settle. Fight for success. Fight for freedom. It's worth it. Thank you. Um, that might help you with your business. So, any questions in the audience? How can you find you online? <laughs> How can you find you online? Yeah. Um, I, I wish I had like you know this five-step process to tell you. But the truth is, I believe you stumble on it. That's the honest truth. You, you, you make the most of your current situation. I knew from growing up or when I left university that I, I had a, a passion for just wanting to help people. That's all I knew. And that's the only seed you need. And I just followed that. Any opportunity that came to either help maybe a mentor who does something about helping people, I would throw myself into that. Uh, the, HSBC, when I was working there, wanted to do something for students. I would throw myself into that. And I just sort of took opportunities as they came. Each time, that internal check in me, the more I enjoyed it, the more I knew I was going down the right line. Thank you. Um, I'm very sure the question was for you. <laughs> uh, how did I find you online? Oh, how did I find you? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Just a great addition. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I thought I said, how do you find your own line? Yeah, that's true. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> me, me online. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Who changed the cheat up? <laughs> Sorry. That's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I thought you said, how do you find your own line?
you find your own line? That's so, oh, your own line. Okay. okay. No. <laughs> Who changed the tree? Com. Very simple. That's my website, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook. You know, Who changed the tree? Simple. U C H E E Z I C H I. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, we're, we're having room for another question. So I was going to say, just encourage my brother there, but you, but you actually helped somebody else out that couldn't exactly. answer that question. Exactly. You gave an extra, so well done. Well, that means to answer that question. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> That's how I left him to keep going. Like, yeah. um, any other questions? Anybody else got a question? Yes, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, I don't need a mic. Yeah, voice um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for that talk. I really appreciate that. I was going to say, what is, um, as much as we talk about goal setting, so sometimes we set big goals and we set small goals, what's um, your biggest goal um, for the next five years or in the next year or so? Okay. Because you seem like you've achieved some milestone that you've enjoyed so far. So my, my, uh, my biggest goal uh, in the next year uh, is very simple. I, I, I just want to uh, survive another year in business. <laughs> Sounds very simple, but when you're running your own business full time, it can get a bit scary. Um, and I think I've sort of alluded to that fact, which is uh, I'm going to start a I want to start a PhD program. And within um, when you said the next five years, uh, I, I simply want to be on the New York Times bestsellers list. I want to write a book that's it. that would that I want to I'm doing the research. That's, uh, that's why I'm doing the PhD, and I want to write a book a, re a book not just about you know principles, but a life-changing book. I'm Christian, proud of, I'm proud of being Christian. I believe that this book is Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Any more questions? Yes. Okay. My question is, thank you very much, that was awesome. Uh, my question is, what if you have quite a few passions? How how do you know, how do you differentiate between the majors and the minors, if that makes any sense? You know, there's something about timing. If I have, you know, three or four things that I'm passionate about, then if I look at my life and the life of a few friends, the one that I focused on in the moment is the one whose time is right. And so you need to be reflective. This is where, for me, uh, mentors become very important. Because I had a real passion, and I really had a passion for students. That's where I started from. You know, students and all this. Well. My mentor came to me and said, Uche, I think your passion for students should be funded by a business that will give you the freedom to do that. The kind of money you need uh, to really follow that passion, being a focus on the students, you might not be able to get there really. Mm. And so I realized that I could work with MBAs, executive MBAs, professionals, corporate organizations, and by doing that, that's how I'm able to help a, a charity, SEO London, that I'm part of, and help them do various programs. Mm. So I think uh, you know, look at your passions, but also be mindful of the time. 